All right, now let's get started with macronutrients. First of all, what is a macronutrient? Every single food we eat breaks down into macronutrients. We need large amounts of these to provide us with energy, not just energy for exercise, but these macronutrients provide us with the energy we need just to be alive, like breathing or blinking. Energy can also be described as calories. Calories and energy is interchangeable. Think food is equal to calories, it's equal to energy. So, when you eat food, what happens? There are three different types of macronutrients. All foods break down into one of these three macronutrients. We have carbohydrates, protein, and fat. All three of these work together to provide you energy and keep your body functioning every day. Each macronutrient has its own specific role in the body, and we will learn that as this presentation continues. So how much of each macronutrient do you need? Well, this depends on many different factors. Age, gender, activity type, medical diagnoses, and so far and so on. The United States Department of Agriculture, the USDA, recommends a general split of the three macronutrients. Basically, it recommends that out of all the calories you consume each day, 45 to 65% of that should be from carbohydrates, 10 to 35% of that should be from protein, and 20 to 35% of that should be from fat. However, this is just a general recommendation. There are many different diets and suggestions out there that'll adjust the percentages of each of these macronutrients. And we will explore further in the presentation how altering the amounts of these will affect you and how your body functions. Now let's talk about the goal of a healthy diet. Why do we have to eat healthy anyways? Well, there are two approaches to answering this question. First is moderation. Many times, focusing on one specific macronutrient can lead you to forget about all the other ones. Though there are many diets out there suggesting you cut out carbs or have excessive protein, these are usually fad diets and not sustainable. The second is intuitive eating. This is approaching eating with no diet restrictions or meal plans and trusting your body and not viewing food as good or bad just knowing that all food gives you energy. A harmony of moderation and intuitive eating is key to listening to your body and providing it with what it needs. In the previous slide, we mentioned that calories is equal to energy. But what does this really mean? This video will explain what a calorie is, how to measure it, and what calories do inside of your body. We hear about calories all the time. How many calories are in this cookie? How many are burned by 100 jumping jacks, or long distance running, or fidgeting? But what is a calorie really? And how many of them do we actually need? Calories are a way of keeping track of the body's energy budget. A healthy balance occurs when we put in about as much energy as we lose. If we consistently put more energy into our bodies than we burn, the excess will gradually be stored as fat in our cells and will gain weight. If we burn off more energy than we replenish, we'll lose weight. So we have to be able to measure the energy we consume and use, and we do so with a unit called the calorie. One calorie, the kind we measure in food, also called a large calorie, is defined as the amount of energy it would take to raise the temperature of one kilogram of water by one degree Celsius. Everything we consume has a calorie count, a measure of how much energy the item stores in its chemical bonds. The average pizza slice has 272 calories. There are about 78 in a piece of bread, and an apple has about 52. That energy is released during digestion and stored in other molecules that can be broken down to provide energy when the body needs it. It's used in three ways. About 10% enables digestion, about 20% fuels physical activity, and the biggest chunk, around 70%, supports the basic functions of our organs and tissues. That third usage corresponds to your basal metabolic rate, a number of calories you would need to survive if you weren't eating or moving around. Add in some physical activity and digestion, 
and you arrive at the official guidelines for how many calories the average person requires each day, 2,000 for women and 2,500 for men. Those estimates are based on factors like average weight, physical activity, and muscle mass. So does that mean everyone should shoot for around 2,000 calories? Not necessarily. If you're doing an energy-guzzling activity, like cycling the Tour de France, your body could use up to 9,000 calories per day. Pregnancy requires slightly more calories than usual. And elderly people typically have a slower metabolic rate. Energy is burned more gradually, so less is needed. Here's something else you should know before you start counting calories. The calorie counts on nutrition labels measure how much energy the food contains, not how much energy you can actually get out of it. Fibrous foods like celery and whole wheat take more energy to digest, so you'd actually wind up with less energy from a 100-calorie serving of celery than a 100-calorie serving of potato chips. Not to mention the fact that some foods offer nutrients like protein and vitamins, while others provide far less nutritional value. Eating too many of those foods could leave you overweight and malnourished. And even with the exact same food, Different people might not get the same number of calories. Variations in things like enzyme levels, gut bacteria, and even intestine length means that every individual's ability to extract energy from food is a little different. So a calorie is a useful energy measure, but to work out exactly how many of them each of us requires, we need to factor in things like exercise, food type, and our body's ability to process energy. Good luck finding all of that on a nutrition label.